Alright, last up on the list is Critical Engine Factor's Spiraling Slipstream. Spiraling Slipstream is pretty easy to understand. Uh, there's not a lot of complicated stuff that goes on here. As always, we'll start out by drawing two airplanes. The red airplane and the green airplane. And as always, uh, we'll give the engine failures. The left engine failed here, the right engine failed here. We'll draw asymmetric thrust. Tending to turn this airplane to the left, and asymmetric thrust. Tending to turn this airplane to the right. And we'll draw the rudder. Tending to keep this airplane straight, and the rudder acting to keep this airplane going straight. And of course, uh, we need to talk about the prop. So, this airplane has got a propeller right there, and a propeller right there. As we know, the propeller creates more thrust here and here and it creates uh, more, it pushes more air backwards. So you've got more backwards moving air here and then you do here. Same way, you've got more air moving backwards here, you've got less air moving backwards here. Also the air is moving faster. Now, let's start something new here for a minute. According to Bernoulli's principle, if you have a Venturi, something that looks sort of like that, and you have fluid moving through it, the area where the speed of the fluid increases, in this case right here, is going to be at a lower pressure. So, lower pressure, then over here where you've got a higher pressure. This is basic uh, basic um, Bernoulli's principle. So what we see here is we see air flowing backwards at a high speed. We see air flowing backwards at a slower speed. What that's going to mean is that's going to mean air flowing faster is going to have oh, try again. Air flowing faster is going to have a lower pressure whereas air here, flowing slower, is going to have a higher pressure. Same way, faster moving air, lower pressure, slower moving air, higher pressure. Now, we can delete that and just talk about the effect of the airflow without the problem at this point. If you have faster moving air coming backwards, in this case, air flowing like this, it's going to be deflected from high to low. And the same way, you've got airflow here coming backwards off the engine. It's going to be deflected from high to low pressure. In this case, the air will be deflected away from the airplane. And in this case, it'll be deflected towards the airplane. Now, the question is, which of these two aircraft is going to have a more effective rudder? Obviously, this airplane is going to have a more effective rudder. Let's do that in a different color. Because the rudder is going to have more airflow moving across it. If the rudder has more airflow moving across it, it's going to become more effective and it will become more able to oppose the acceler excuse me, the asymmetric thrust. Whereas over here, the airflow moves away from the rudder the rudder is left on its own to oppose the asymmetric thrust. So, spiraling slipstream. Air moving backwards from the prop is moved from high pressure to low pressure, which causes it to be pushed towards the rudder, energizing the airflow over the rudder, and enhancing its ability to keep the airplane going straight.